Let me start off by saying that it's Merry Christmas, not Happy Holidays. This is America. If you can't sing Merry Christmas, just leave. <laughs> Can't do this with a straight face. All right, guys, finally back doing my vinyl collection. I believe now we are in part five with this. And yeah, this is going to be the last part of this year of 2020. I got one more video I want to do in the next couple of days that is going to be a bit different, nothing crazy. It's just going to be a little different. So hopefully you guys stick around for that. But yeah, other than that, the only other thing to talk about what's going to be playing in the background is this right here, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the album title, but it's by the black metal band from Quebec, uh, Jaithda, I believe is the right way to say it from what I've told. Incredible atmospheric black metal that if you're a fan of Fortress, you'll instantly fall in love with this. Okay, so in this part we're basically going through the rest of my Argus Slim collection, because last part in part four we ended with the beginning of it, and Honest to God, this fucking part's gonna look like a Hernactus, Canyon Bickle, Motley Crew Forever hybrid, basically, of a video. So, let's get it going with the first one up. This is Galloping Through the Battled Ruins, the debut full length by Argus Lynn. I got this particular record through a gift uh, from my friend Caleb that I haven't talked to in a while uh, that much recently. I used to do a lot of video calls with him. So, Caleb, if you're watching this, thanks again, man. But yeah, the debut full length by Argus Lynn that personally for me, I don't think it's all that like special. Like it's a good album, yes, but there's just like this raw kind of like gritty edge they have that doesn't really make the riffs just hit as hard as the other material I'm going to be talking about a little bit with the Argus Lynn discography. So out of the Three full lengths they've done, I can personally say that this is my least favorite of the three. Other than that, really the only other thing to talk about here is the layout. This is a Drakkar repress, the second press from 2015. I know they've done already an additional repress, I think last year or really, really early this year. So, I mean, it's still available if you want to get it. But uh, yeah, as for the layout, the artworks, very spot glossed backside with track listings, comes on a gatefold and is just double LP plain black vinyl. Following that I have the compilation they put out which was Argus Lynn's Arsenal of Glory. Not really much to say here other than it's a compilation comprised of some tracks in the debut and some demos but kind of like rehearsals and demo versions of it that again you know I know I come off like this diehard Argus Lynn fan which I guess I am because there's going to be one full length in particular which we're going to be talking about that yes I still hold it as one of the best pieces of death metal in existence but it's like everything before that particular album is just like okay because it's like yes it's more it's melodic death metal but it's just got like this raw edge to it that just it doesn't click with me as um, hard as the later material which is kind of why I started buying up all this stuff in the beginning thinking all of it's good and just I don't know early stuff by them isn't anything spectacular it's just it's good enough to listen to and I guess that's really it but uh, yeah other than that it's another Drakkar repress from 2015 I'm pretty sure it's like sold out or something and I don't think they've done a repress of this particular release since but uh, yeah keeping it going got the artwork right here once again Spock lost the shit because Drakkar seems to love doing that backside and single LP on plain black vinyl. Then I had the fan favorite and my personal favorite as well. It'd be the sophomore album by Argus Slim, Incorrigible Bigotry. Yep, 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 yep. In my all-time favorite top 10 death metal albums list I did, I think last year or so, this was in my top three and I still hold it as one of the best. because so I know everyone says it and I don't care. The riffs are ungodly good. Like it's basically like a death metal take to a lot of people to like Merciful Fate, like those really, really infectious types of melodic riffs that have like that galloping edge to it that a lot of people seem to uh, tie in with the adjectives describing this album. And from start to finish, you know, every minute of it is just too damn good not to enjoy for the most part. That being said, I, I want to just do this one disclaimer this one time. Uh, I know I'm giving this a lot of a praise, but I'm not going to say like, you know, hey, if you can't enjoy this, don't be a fucking pussy. Because I mean, the content is like insanely offensive. So it's like, 
obviously people are going to get offended by it. So I'm not, if you don't want to listen to it because of that, fine. And I'm not trying to scapegoat myself by being a white knight here because it's, you know, end of the day, me just talking about this to a lot of people is, uh, you know, deemed very wrong of me. But I'm not going to skip over parts of my collection to satisfy strangers. Just going to say that. But uh, yeah, anyway, back to uh, my record collection now. Uh, yeah, this is a first press put up through Deaf to Mankind Records, and I got this uh, used a couple of years ago, back when I used to live in uh, my old city, New Bedford, and a record store opened up. And the first day I went there just to see all the hype about it, he said he had metal records. And to my on surprise, this was there, and I still have the same sleeve to prove it, that it was for $45 a first press artist lint record. How the fuck am I going to say no to that? Thankfully as well too, this is actually still in really decent shape for something that came out back in 2001. Because the reason why I really didn't go to that record store all that much, because I thought, you know, if he has this, fuck, I'm going to be here like every week, is the fact that he takes really poor care of his records. And this was like one of like, you know, the 300 he had that was in decent condition. Because there were some that literally looked like he used them as frisbees. It was repulsive. But thankfully this is um, in good condition and plays honestly great for a first press. Other than that, just on a standard um, black vinyl and comes with a one-sided <clears throat> lyric sheet. As well too, I have the follow-up full length by that. This is Hornets of Pogrom by Argus Lent. And this, I would say, is my second favorite of theirs. That at first I wasn't crazy for it, maybe because I was just so attached to the previous album that anything less than that just seemed, you know, undeserving of my attention. But over the years I've come to like this album more and more because there's one particular track on here, I think it's a Mangled uh, Freightage. That song has easily one of the best uh, guitar riffs and melodies that Argus Lynn has ever done. But, uh, yeah, overall solid stuff by them that I think is definitely worth checking out that still, you know, has a good enough production to that gives that beefy, aggressive side to them while still maintaining the melody that, you know, calls them a melodic death metal band because they are a melodic death metal band and not some, like, extreme power metal as people call it, which I know I complained about that two weeks ago, but still that shit just makes me oh my eyes so much that people just don't want to accept a good band like Argus Lent is a melodic death metal band. But once again, just like the previous records I've shown, this is a Drakkar repress from 2015. And as you can tell, like all the Drakkar represses, it is spot gloss to shit again on both sides. Other than that, it comes with a lyric sheet. And this vinyl press comes on a picture disc, which surprisingly is decent enough. But every time I listen to this, I'm always tempted to buy the recent repress that isn't on picture disc because I bet the repress sounds anything better than a picture disc by fucking miles. Almost done here guys talking about Argus Lint. Next up is the two-way split between Argus Lint and Marshall Barrage. If memory serves me right, this is the last release they've done of new material Argus Lint has put out. And overall, really only bought it for the Argus Lint side because the Marshall Barrage uh, side is kind of like this messy take of death grind that it feels like they're trying to carpy Argus Lynn, but it just comes off really sloppy and just it didn't click with me as much but the Argus Lynn side is solid stuff because later era basically everything from 2000 onwards by Argus Lynn, I think personally is worth checking out and everything before that is <clears throat> for me but um, yeah this is another Drakkar repress from 2019 that I snapped up right away because it was killing me at the time that this was the only 12 inch uh, release uh, by Argus Lynn I didn't have so when the pre-orders went up for the repress snapped it up right away. Only other thing to show here is that it's a single LP but on a blue and black splatter pressing. And the final thing that is Argus Lynn related is actually the newest release they've done as a yet that came out earlier this year and it's a compilation. So one last time, this is Argus Lint with Unconquered Solidary. Let me start off by saying, wow, I totally wasted 30 bucks buying this because remember what I said earlier about early Argus Lint is 
uh, and later Argus Lint is great. Well, that really applies to this compilation, because this is all unreleased material they've done, and one uh, carnivore cover, which is Race War. Hmm, wonder why. My complaints with this is, again, if you're going to be a melodic death metal band, you need a strong, crisp production to make those melodies really hit. And when you have this really, you know, tin can raw production, it just like makes my skin crawl trying to hear these melodies come out because it's just so messy and jagged and just not what I want melodic death metal to sound like that after one, you know, spin with this record, I'm like, I can't picture myself ever spinning this again, that if I knew it sounded this bad, I wouldn't have bought it, but, uh, yeah, it's in my collection, I guess. I mean, it does have my favorite song by them, uh, Mob of the Howling's always been my personal favorite Argus Lynn song, so I guess that's what really sold me enough to just buy it from the description on it. But, uh, yeah, they promised a new full length this year, but instead we just got a compilation, so... We're all still waiting on the follow-up any time now. Other than that, there's really nothing else to show here besides the artwork and backside right here. And it's just on standard black vinyl. But one thing I just find funny that I've noticed now more and more within the comments of Argus Lent videos is people always bring up that, man, these are the guys that endorsed Obama, which surprisingly they actually did back in uh, 2008 there is like some zine or something that showcases that but it's like it's just fucking a, a straw man argument to make it seem like Argus Lynn's not racist or something because that is equivalent to saying I'm not racist I had sex with a black girl it's like no 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 you, you were just horny so you know people bringing that up is equivalent to them just being like they're not racist they just agree with their politics of Obama so that shit just makes me roll my eyes, and I just felt like I needed to say that because I keep seeing it more and more often now. Okay, with all that being said, now we can finally move on to a different band. Next up is the one album I have of yet by them. Wish I had more, but it's really hard to come by material with this band, especially their vinyl. And that would be Arismenda with their full length, Within the Vacuum of Infinity. To a lot of people, this is the magnum opus when it comes to talking about the Black Twilight Circle. And man, does this album just absolutely put me in awe and just mesmerize me from start to finish. Because I remember listening to this when I discovered it back in 2015. And just being so, like, immersed in the powerful, dense, you know, psychedelic, weird atmosphere Arismenda creates. Because it feels like the writing, to an extent, kind of takes, uh, you know, influence and paying homage to stuff from the second wave black metal scene. But it's just like there's this weird, you know, psychotic, psychedelic influences they put within their sound that really transcends them to a completely different world, I feel like, whenever you listen to a Black Twilight uh, Circle release and within the vacuum of infinity showcases that to their fullest potential tracks on here that prove my point are is the opening track those beaten paths of confusion drowning in the path of consciousness and poison yourself with thought are just absolutely incredible and too good for words it's just a must listen if you want truly something unique within black metal as for the layout it's pretty bare bones you have this artwork and backside of the track listings, and double LP that both come on plain black vinyl. Moving on to the next release, and hopefully I'm saying this band's name right, this is the one sole full length release by Araric, I think? I can place money on a bet that I more than likely mispronounced that completely wrong, so please, if any of you guys know how to pronounce it right, please tell me because I'm all ears to learning how to. But yeah, the one thing that really sold me about this band is uh, the fact that it's part of the Helvetic Underground Committee uh, put out through Iron Bonehead, I believe like either two or three years ago. And that was at the time I was really obsessing over that group because Ungfell was gaining a lot more momentum. And this is when the band, or not band, I should say, the group was really, you know, pushing out release after release on like a monthly basis. And another thing too that's quite unique about them is their lyrics and even the band name too is all a part of a dead language uh, supposedly that really showcases a lot of creativity and it's just something really cool I would say when bands go out 
to a completely different language that is dead and kind of, you know, revive it just for an album. It really gives off quite the experience uh, if you're into that type of stuff that uh, makes it, again, pretty interesting. Because, I mean, look at these song titles. What in the absolute fuck is that? I don't know, it's just really cool overall, but other than that, musical-wise, it's a blend of, like, black metal and doom metal that at some points gets a little slow and atmospheric and dense, and then there's obviously the black metal elements to it. But this is the one thing they did with this project, not sure if they were going to continue with it, which is kind of why I'm not a big fan of when these, you know, inner groups really expand to more than four bands, because they seem to overwhelm themselves with so many different projects, that I feel like they kind of forget that there's like 10 other inactive projects and I feel like this is one of them because this is all they did with it so far and they haven't done really anything since. In terms of the layout, I just showed you the front and back of it, but it does come on a gatefold. As well too comes with an A2 poster with the band logo and band itself in question. Any nice little forest with a campfire going. And this final press comes on white and black swirl, limited to 100 copies. Oh boy. Okay, moving on next is Aryan Blood with the compilation Through Struggle to Victory. I would say out of all the records in my collection, this is one of the hardest ones to obtain. Mainly because it's been blacklisted for years, it's limited to 88 copies. And it's just obviously long gone been out of print as it was put up through Bestial Burst, which is that even a label anymore? This is like the one and only time I've ever heard of this label. And <clears throat> from what I've seen on eBay on the rare occasions, this goes for like triple digits easily and it still sells out within just a couple of hours. So how I was personally able to obtain this was a few years back, I had a Facebook friend who, he changes his name every once so often, and I still think I, I have him as a Facebook friend. He was willing to sell this record because he had it in an, another copy of it, surprisingly, and uh, he was bidding it away, and I remember telling him, it's like, dude, whatever the other person is bidding, add another $5 to my bid until he gives up because I'm not quitting until I can buy this off of you. And um, finally happened, got it, few weeks later, it got in the mail, and uh, yeah, that's how I got it, through basically talking to people on personal messenger is how I was able to get this record. But yeah, overall this is some solid material by Aryan Blood, it's one of the very few NS uh, bands that I really feel like actually put in time with their guitarists and songwriting, because a lot of them are so obsessed with the fatherland, I think they forget that they're actually a fucking band for the most part. But, uh, yeah, the one thing I will say that I think is fucking atrocious about this is that there is a little type of, like, mini instrumental track. I think it's that one long word right there that is just really fucking cheesy that I laugh at every time I put this on the turntable. As for the layout, you have artwork, backside with the track listings, single LP on just plain black vinyl, and an insert sheet with just information and song titles. And one other thing I want to say that, again, I just got to laugh at some of this shit, is uh, everyone's always trying to, you know, put Aryan Blood material on YouTube, and obviously it's going to get taken down within a month, and not because it's LeftTube or Commitube, it's it's mainly because YouTube is their own private company, they can do whatever the fuck they want, and I've seen people, which it, I just couldn't stop laughing at it, believe it or not, this there is one song off of this compilation on YouTube right now, and what they did, that way it won't get banned, is they, fl <laughs> they flipped the logo, and they blocked out the word Aryan. And it's actually up on YouTube, and I just couldn't stop laughing at this is like what people are doing for measures just to get this shit on the internet. Because, so, I mean, you can basically go to, uh, oh, what's the website? BitChute, and they have the whole compilation up. Up next is some death metal. This is Ascended Dead with their full length, Abhorrent Manifestation. Nothing really to say here other than it's just dirty, aggressive, brooding death metal from start to finish that really it won me over at the time because members of Neltro are a part of this band and for me personally, you're going to hear it a lot as we continue on in this series, Neltro is 
honest to God, the most extreme act I've ever seen in my life or heard from their material that I hate to break the hearts of a lot of War Metal fans. They make War Metal look like pussy shit, all right? And like, Nelro is on a whole new level that War Metal bands wish they could sound like. But knowing the fact that members of Nelro were a part of this, it immediately got me interested to check this out. And overall, it's nothing new, nothing reinventing the wheel, and there's probably tons of other bands out there that sound like this, but it's this overall really solid death metal put out through uh, Dark Descent and Invictus, so there's obviously going to be loads of copies still in print that both labels I'm pretty sure still carry them. But keeping the routine going here for the layout, you have artwork, backside with track listings and band photos, single LP again on plain black vinyl and has lyrics and artwork in an insert sheet. Coming up next is the release by Ashbore Bloodlands. Ashbore is an atmospheric black metal band. I know from the west coast, I'm not sure if it's California or Oregon that they're from, but I know it's the West Coast. And it seems like a lot of atmospheric black metal bands uh, from the States, a majority of them seem to be from the West Coast for some reason. I don't know if there's a reason for that. I don't know if maybe it's because of the whole Cascadian black metal thing going on, but I've just, I've noticed that recently. But for whatever reason, a few of them I think are actually really good, and Ashbore for the most part I would say is a solid atmospheric black metal band. Nothing I would like obsess over and be like, guys you need to listen to this, but overall for the most part if you want just solid atmospheric black metal to add to your collection, Ashbore is definitely a very reliable name to give you some of that material. As for the material in this particular release right here, you know, I haven't spun this in years but the three tracks on here, from what I remember, are pretty lengthy tracks that range around like the 10 minute plus mark. That, I guess the best way to describe it is it kind of reminds me a bit of like the Black Twilight Circle, like you know the Arizmenda record I showed uh, a few records back. That it's like a less harsh version of it, it's a less aggressive version I should say of the Black Twilight Circle that's a bit more hypnotic and more repetitive that really gets you immersed in their atmosphere overall. As for the layout, you have artwork, backside with track listings, and the band logo. As for the LP variant, I got this at Maryland Death Fest 2016, I want to say, at just a random vendor they had. And to my surprise, this was a test press of it because as you can see right here, the labels are just blank white. So I don't know if it was intentional, they did it by mistake, but out of just a random vendor, I got a test press of this Ashborough record. Next up is another Black Twilight Circle band. This is one that a lot of people kind of forget is a part of that circle, mainly because it hasn't done anything in a while, and that would be Ash Datus. From what I've seen, I'm pretty sure Ash Datus is like the first Black Twilight Circle band that started the whole thing that has members of Volan and Arismenda in this that you know I gotta admit at the time I thought it was really good but now listening to this a few times I'm not really sure what to think of it because you're either gonna love it or hate it on just one particular component that it gives you and it's the vocals because instrumentally it's really bare bones black metal there's really not much to say there just that description alone covers basically every little second of music you're going to hear instrumentally as for the vocals i can't stress this enough it's either going to make you enjoy this record or absolutely hate it because on one hand i think you know the vocals are very you know high pitch and sound agonizing and tormented and just miserable sounding that, you know, at times I really enjoy it. But then there are times that the vocals become insanely whiny, that it legitimately sounds like a baby crying because you stole its candy. Like, it, it's really irritating sometimes. With that description, I guess, you know, I just gotta be in the right mood for this record. If I just really want some agonizing, hateful, miserable black metal, this hits the spot for some reason, but again, I don't blame you guys if you're not going to enjoy it because I cannot stress it enough. Once you hear the first opening just verse from the vocals, you're either going to love it or hate it. As for the layout, this is a one and only time pressing, and I'm pretty sure it now goes for like dumb, stupid money on Discogs. But you have 
artwork, backside of the track listing and photo of each band member, and really nothing else to show us. It's really bare bones packaging, but just on standard plain black vinyl. Finishing up with this part, next up is the debut full length by Ati Tagar, I think is the right way to say it, with their uh, full length titled whatever the fuck that is. Once again, another Helvetic Underground Committee band within my vinyl collection that around this time of its release, I believe back in either 2019 or late, late 2018, I was just basically buying up anything that had the Helvetic Underground Committee logo stamped on it, because around that time, uh, Ongfeld basically stole my heart with their latest full length and eagerly have been awaiting the follow-up for it. And yeah, that's when I was really obsessing over the Helvetic Underground Committee, just solely because I knew it was going to be good if the members of Ongfeld would be a part of it. Now, I just want to go off on like a little bit of a side note here and personally thank the Helvetic Underground Committee because about a year or two ago, back when they, you know, used to frequently comment on my videos and watch them, which I doubt they do anymore after all the stupidity I've done this year, they wanted to personally reach out to me on their Facebook page and, you know, thank me and tell, and tell me all the appreciation they have for, you know, my videos talking about them in a positive light that they told me that with all their upcoming releases, the tapes, the vinyl, the CDs of any band affiliated with the group, they would send it to me personally free of charge to showcase their appreciation uh, for my videos talking highly of them. And as fucking flattered as I was that they would do that for me, I just had to respectfully decline it. Because with all these videos I do, you know, talking about the music I enjoy, I don't do this for freebies. I don't do this for handouts by an artist or band. You know, I want to support the music that I enjoy in any way I see fit by, you know, personally giving them my hard-earned money, by giving them the financial support, and, you know, talking on YouTube with whatever following I have on here, regardless of sub subscriber count or view count, because this has always just been a hobby for me, and that's basically it. So as flattered as I was that they would do that for me, had to respectfully decline it, but once again, just want to give a personal massive thank you to the Helvetic Underground Committee. If you guys are watching this, you guys are fucking awesome. Getting back on track here, but uh, yeah, Ati Tagar, or Ati Tigur, hopefully saying one of them ways kind of correctly, is a black metal band from Switzerland that I would say really takes a lot of influence from the first two albums by Satyricon. So if you like those two albums, the first two by uh, Satyricon, I feel like you'll have a lot of enjoyment with this album because at times there'll be like these kind of like, uh, kind of like ghoulish type of keyboards that come through that really give off that icy cold atmosphere that really enhances the melodies and just overall tone of the album quite well in a tasteful way that, uh, yeah, can't stress it enough, if you enjoy Satyricon, you'll find some enjoyment with this album. As for this release right here, it was put out through Eisenwald, and I'm pretty sure there's still copies available both on the US distro and the European distros, so you can get it there while uh, it's still in print. But as for the layout, you have artwork, backside with track listings, lyrics, and band picture. As for the LP, it just comes on single LP, plain black vinyl along with an A2 poster of the band logo and guy doing the whole invisible orange grab thing. Second to last up for this vinyl collection part is going to be Atheist with their sophomore album Unquestionable Presence. Florida death metal legends Atheist that really I think at the time were really pushing boundaries for what death metal could become because these were one of the first ever guys to incorporate jazz fusion into their sound and really experiment and test the waters of death metal. That personally for me, the only two bands that have, you know, infused jazz fusion and death metal in a good and tasteful way is Atheist and Cynic. The only two that I think do it right. As for right now me making this video, this is the only release I have of theirs on a physical format because I really need to get all the other material that they were releasing around this time, which was a piece of time and elements, both phenomenal albums as well. But Unquestionable Presence was always my personal favorite because 
As colorful and flashy as the Jazz Fusion moments on here were, that really just reminded me so much of Cynic, because I found Cynic first a few years prior, before I knew who Atheist was. I think that's what really clicked with me, because tracks on here like Mother Man, Your Life's Retribution, and Enthralled in Essence really are just so incredible and almost too good for world words as it just comes off like otherworldly that uh, man if you don't know who atheist is uh, there's a problem because it's basically an essential listen if you want to get into more of the experimental realm of death metal as for the layout i don't know if you guys could tell it's a season of mist you know repress i don't know if you could tell through that uh, hype sticker right there that i'm pretty sure they still keep this you know in print because it's just that big of a name that they'll always keep this album in print which is kind of why I haven't been in such a rush to get the other albums by Atheist but uh, yeah I got this at the Maryland Death Fest I think 2014 no not 2014 uh, 2015 or 2016 that uh, yeah it was just one of the many things I got with my haul during the time as for the layout you have the very recognizable and legendary artwork backside with band picture and track listings, printed inner sleeve with lyrics and notes and thank you notes with band picture again, and this vinyl press comes on semi-translucent green limited to 300 copies. Coming up now on the final record that will be shown in this part, that's going to be Axis of Perdition with their full length, The Ignuman Method. Let me start off by saying I freaked out like a little kid seeing that there was Axis of Perdition material on the LP format. For the longest time, they've never done anything on this format. But I felt really dumb finding out because this was pressed in 2017 and I didn't get it until like early this year. So I was pretty late to the party looking for it, but just ecstatic that this exists. And uh, there are still many and copies available to get on Arachnophobia Records, so it's like, the fuck are you people doing? Get on this shit, cause this is some phenomenal kind of like industrial fueled black metal that absolutely no one talks about on here. And it's like, you people are really sleeping on a heavy hitter because the riffs on here are just so fucking powerful, yet at the same time is so ungodly terrifying. Like, this is like a black metal fan's wet fantasy album right here, which again, I just don't get why no one talks about this band all that much. Its influences obviously stem from bands like, uh, you know, Mysticum and Thorns, that very just aggressive, powerful, you know, industrial-fueled black metal. But it's really the dark ambient moments on here that truly terrify me and really are the standout moments, I would say. Just overall, from start to finish, this album fucking rips and absolutely love it. I think one of the kind of like, you know, sleeper hits of the UK black metal scene that really showcases how really unique and diverse uh, the UK black metal scene is because what I've noticed about the UK when they do extreme metal is there isn't that there isn't a particular sound they go for. Like each individual band, especially within the UK black metal scene, all do something completely different. Like, you know, the only thing relating to this, I would say, is Anola Throck. Yet, at the same time, Anola Throck doesn't really sound all that similar to Axis of Perdition. So, again, I just, I know I'm repeating myself, I can't stress it enough, you guys need to check this band out. As for the layout, as I stated, it was put out through Arachnophobia Records and Musica Noir Records, so get it there because it's still widely available. You have this artwork right here that looks very similar to that of a face hugger, but from what I've searched up, a lot of their lyrical topics have to do with Silent Hill. Backside with track listings. Comes with an insert sheet with lyrics and more artwork. Single LP, but my variant is on gold, limited to 100 copies. All right, guys, that's it for this vinyl collection part right here. Like always, links will be provided to everything I talked about in the description below. And, uh... Yeah, guys, other than that, make sure you guys drink plenty of water to stay hydrated. And most importantly of all, make sure you judge people by actually getting to know them and confronting them and not through a YouTube comment section.